a wee minute or two to kick in. Okay, that's us. So um, if you can just do the sedent by roll call. Alec Allison? Yeah. Poppy Corbett? Yeah. George Greenshields? Uh, apologies from Councillor Greenshields. They had another meeting. Thank you. Eric Holford? No. Mark Horsham? I'm here, Carol. Richard Lockhart? Yep. Eileen Logan? Yes. I have apologies from Ian McAllen. Catherine McClymon? Here. Colin McGavigan? Here. Julia Mars? Here. David Shearer? Here. Okay, and officers present today are Lynn Wiley and myself, Carol Lyon from Admin Services, and we have Inspector Brian Lundy from Police Scotland. I'll hand back to yourself, Chair. Thank you very much. Right, well, first of all, declaration of interests. Anyone? No. OK, then we will do the minutes of the previous meeting. And anybody got any relevant points there? Wasn't a very long meeting then. This could be even shorter, this one. Anyway, there are no points arising. At all? Okie doke. Right. Well, then what we'll do is move to our first speaker, Police Scotland. And we will offer the floor to you. On you go. Thank you. I'm just going to uh, pull up this presentation. Just one moment, just while we're, we're adding it. Is the technology winning? Should be. It should be just uploading just now. I'm hope, hoping. There we go. Got it. She's got it. Well done. Yeah. Okay. For some reason I can't see it in my screen right now. Sorry, but is our who's got control of this here? For some reason, I can't see it on my screen. Okay. Um, didn't if I make your no, you sh you should be able to see it. Um. Because you are in as a participant rather than an attendee. I can certainly talk you through it, but I, I can't see the, the screen. Do, do you want me Some to try and do you want me to try and share it from um, my end? Yeah, if you could, that'd be fantastic. Okay, can can everyone see it? 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Sorry, apologies. Okay. apologies no, that's, that's fine. If you just let me know when you want to move on to the next slide. Right, that's great. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brian Lindy. I'm the new a community inspector for Lark Hall and Clydesdale areas. I've only moved to the post approximately about a month, a month and a half ago. So for about the next 10 minutes, my aim is to cover the main points of Police Scotland policing plan for 2020 to 23 and how this will be implemented in your local areas. So after consultation with local communities, partners and by reviewing emerging crime trends and threats, Police Scotland identified four main priorities. Could you move to the next slide, please? So the first one is reducing violence and disorder, and this will include violent crime, firearms and offensive weapons, hate crime and antisocial behaviour. Our current uh, violent crime detection rate within this subdivision currently sits at 75%. Now this figure is not obtained from working alone. An example of such work took place late last year in the Clydesdale area. A male resident who was, who was particularly problematic within the Lanark area was carrying out regular and significant acts of disorder, violence and antisocial behaviour at his home address and throughout indeed the town of Lanark. His conduct was affecting neighbours, the wider community and impacting on police resources due to the volume of calls his actions were generating. <laughs> The Lanark Community Policing Team, working alongside Response Policing and South Lanarkshire Council, uh, took a coordinated approach in order to tackle this issue. And through diligent inquiry by community officers, managed to gain the trust of witnesses who had previously been reluctant to engage and provide statements. We managed to sustain a sufficiency of evidence where he was arrested for numerous offences and eventually remanded in custody. And through these reports to the Procurator Fiscal and action taken by South Lanarkshire Council, the male now has, a, now has an antisocial behaviour order in force, which will uh, allow strict monitoring of his behaviour upon release from prison, which will then enable us to better tackle any future issues should they arise. If we could move on to the next slide, please. Next slide is for public protection. Again, there's, it's broken down into four elements. Sexual crime, domestic abuse and gender-based violence, adult and child protection and road users. Now, public protection is an area of policing where we've placed additional officers into due to an increased demand these past years. And within Lanarkshire, we now have the following specialist departments. Divisional Rape Investigation Unit, Offender Management Unit, Family Protection Unit, Domestic Abuse Unit, the Concern Hub, PPU Intelligence Development Unit and a PPU Proactive Unit. And Cybercrime continues to increase across Lanarkshire, as it does right across Britain. And as technology develops, criminals are constantly looking at new ways to exploit this for their criminal enterprises, and often they target vulnerable groups whilst doing so. So we have to be in a position to prevent and respond appropriately to this. To do so, Lanarkshire now has a dedicated digital media investigator in order to assist our response and community officers and investigating and detecting these types of crimes and offences. To give you just a kind of small indication for one particular aspect of that, last year in Lanarkshire alone, we executed 120 national online child abuse prevention packages. Another area of public protection is domestic abuse. Tackling domestic abuse is always a focus for Police Scotland. The use of the right to ask and the power to tell was utilised 212 times across South Lanarkshire last year in order to share information about a partner's abuse of past with a potential victim so as to better safeguard him. And another safety measure we also employ here in Lanarkshire is that on a person being released from court for a domestic offence eh, where bail has been imposed, we'll deploy officers to speak to the victim and ensure that they're aware of conditions and that they're content with the safety measures that we have in place. If we could move on to the next slide, please. Next slide is for tackling housebreaking and acquisitive crime. And it's broken down to domestic housebreaking, commercial housebreaking, rural crime and vehicle crime. Now, the detection rate for this type of offence in the past year has increased by 7%. Ideally, uh, what we try to do is address this firstly through pre prevention, which would include utilising the services of community safety officers, 
other partner agencies and the media. As part of the senior management team, we conduct a daily review of all crimes of dishonesty at our morning meetings. And any undetected offences or linked crimes are thereafter allocated to our DAV routine. And this has enabled us to provide an improved service to local residents for a crime type that can have a massive impact on its victims. And by providing a focused and dedicated approach, in essence, we've also improved our officers' investigative skills. It's proved effective, and in recent months, our local DAVRO team, working with colleagues from Ayrshire, reported a 37-year-old male with a total of 15 housebreaking offences, mainly from wind farm areas and rural locations. Another such example is a male currently in prison down, in, down south, is also subject to a number of reports for local housebreakings and robberies within Lanark, eh, Lanark and the wider Lanarkshire areas. And also in the past few months, with a, a prominent car thief from the Glasgow area, we had him identified for numerous housebreakings and theft of motor vehicles across Lanarkshire, and he was subsequently sentenced to three years imprisonment. If we could move to the next slide, please. Oh, it's still. Yeah, it's it's yeah. freezing. <laughs> Reducing the harm caused by substance misuse. So this will focus on drug deaths, drug supply, drug production, and alcohol misuse. We're all aware of the devastating impact drugs can have on individuals and communities. And in order to tackle this, Lancashire Division established a, a dedicated drugs team capable of developing intelligence to the point where executive action could be taken. This team are located in a central location enabling them to respond to emerging drug threats swiftly across the entire division. And to ensure that the unit is not one-dimensional and only focusing on enforcement, Safer Communities Department were consulted with regarding preventative measures that could be adopted in order to encourage and support drug users whilst they're coming off drugs. Officers will speak to persons with addiction issues and make them aware of support available from partner agencies such as CARES, for those residing in the South Lanarkshire. Uh, to highlight the success of this unit prior to COVID restrictions being implemented in the 10 months prior to that, in excess of £7.2 million pounds worth of controlled drugs were removed from the streets of Lanarkshire. Also had huge success in relation to the proceeds of crime seizures, with assets valued at £932,517 being identified and seized by police. Now, due to the global pandemic, we had to look at how we best deploy our resources while still ensuring the public and our officers are protected. Are protected. However, drug enforcement has continued even during the pandemic. And in the last few months alone, we've carried out a number of successful warrant executions in the Clydesdale area. Uh, we seized over a kilo of cocaine from a property in Clydesdale and another, and another property over 6.7 kilos of herbal cannabis. Again, Clydesdale areas. If we could move on to the next slide, please. Yep, the Lark Call Quad Bikes. Um, issues of persons causing annoyance in quad bikes and Lark Call in Clydesdale areas have been ongoing for many years. From August 2018 to August 2019, there were 167 reports of antisocial behaviour involving dirt bikes and quad bikes in the Clydesdale and local areas. And from discussions had with elected members in the local community, it was suggested that there was a, there was a significant underreporting of this issue. So last year, elected members were successful in securing funding from various community councils and landowners. And with that, four quad bikes were bought and gifted to Police Scotland. And on behalf of Police Scotland, I would once again like to thank you all for this. These bikes will be a significant tool it will assist us in tackling this issue and will allow officers access to areas that they've previously been, been, been unaccessible due to the terrain. And this will hopefully resolve the issue and improve upon the quality of life for local residents. We see the largest increase in antisocial behaviour using off-road bikes during the summer months. And as such, the community policing team will run a six-week action plan over Saturdays and Sundays at the quarry and the wider Colburn and Douglas areas in the summer of 2021 in order to tackle this. However, these bikes 
won't just be used for that. They'll also be used for, for targeting other antisocial behaviour, including youth disorder, uh, searches for missing persons. They've already been deployed for that, as, as with the antisocial behaviour. Uh, high visibility patrols in previously hard to reach areas, including public parks, public engagement at gala days and community events, and also provide police with a tactical option for police in large events, such as the fireworks at Strathclyde, uh, Strathclyde Park. If you can move on to the next slide, it's just questions. If, if we have any questions, I'm certainly happy to take any. Any that I can't answer, I will certainly get back to you. <clears throat> Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, just on, uh, thanks very much for that uh, presentation. Uh, it all rang very true as uh, my experience in the Clydesdale area. Um, just one comment: in the previous uh, reports that we've had of this, the number one priority seemed to be, which didn't seem to make any sense to any of my uh, colleagues or myself, was terrorism. And rather than dropping down the list. It has vanished completely from your report. So that's uh, just, just an observation that um, there was a heavy uh, financial input into anti-terrorism, etc. in the in the Clydesdale area, um, or as we were told, that's what the funding was for, uh, which didn't obviously ring true to us as to why that would be necessary. But it is interesting that it has gone completely from the report. The other uh, point I want to make is the quad bikes. The quad bikes, it was raised from local businesses in my ward and 41,000 was raised specifically for work with a problem within the Colburn and the Douglas area. Now, if Police Scotland required them for policing Strathclyde Park and other areas, surely the funding should have come from Police Scotland's core funding rather than our local businesses and community councils paying for a service that they're only actually going to get six weeks for in the summer. It would have been cheaper for us to hire quad bikes uh, and provide them for the police for the six week program rather than our funding and our local businesses financing a project for the whole of uh, of Lanarkshire when Strathclyde Park isn't even in South Lanarkshire. So, that's a bit of a shock that it's not uh, the funding isn't being used directly but for and to the benefit of our constituents no if i can come in on that councillor apologies i've kind of in essence that's probably a bit of an assumption there on my part i i've only been in post about a month and a bit so i i would i presume that they would be used for events such as that a Certainly, they have been deployed in, in the kind of Colburn area. They were used for the missing person in Kraluk very recently as well. Um, they've also been deployed for for duck bikes again in, in, in the Kraluk area already. Uh, but yes, you're perfectly correct. I, and apologies, it's possibly an assumption in my part that it would be used for, for events such as the fireworks. But if that's not the case, uh, I do apologise. Sorry, to come back on that, I have, I, I don't think. Any of my colleagues would have any issues if the bikes are sitting there, they're being used at Strathclyde Park. But entering into this project of, well, uh, it was Councillor Greenshields that spearheaded it all. Um, but Mark and I worked with him on it and we've been involved the whole way, even up to the uh, event where we, we saw the bikes, etc. But to get six weeks for an investment from hard pressed local businesses and local communities, it doesn't seem to be good value for money. From my point of view, I can't speak on behalf of Councillor Horsham or Councillor Greenshields, but could you find out exactly what the plan is for these bikes? Because I can see people asking for their money back because the issue is to protect the areas around the, the for the landowners, for the conservation of nature, for very large business owners and employers, and they're getting six weeks next summer or this summer coming and um, it doesn't seem value for money to me and i'm sure they won't see it as value for money either but maybe councillor horsham would have something to add to that mark yeah. you want to go no, yeah sorry. no i mean you see when we were told about this we were told they were going to be used for the douglas and colburn area and the community councils and local businesses within that area 
donated money to uh, raise money for this purpose. If that is not the case, why were no other community councils and other businesses along South Lanarkshire asked to contribute to this? Our ward is one of the most deprived wards um, in, in the Clydesdale area, and asking for, for that to be... Th there is a, a wee bit of anger because we have saw it released in press statements as well, um, and the feel look, we were the only ward or only area, it, was, it wasn't even the full ward, it was just Douglas and Colborne and businesses within that area um, that were asked to contribute towards this, this project. Apologies, Councillor, again, uh, they have, in, in my short time here, they have been deployed in Clydesdale. Uh, they will not, they'll certainly not be only getting used for a six-week period. They've been out for the high-risk missing person. Uh, I'm sure you kind of saw it over the press, Graham Brady, the gentleman from Curlook. They've been they've been hev heavily utilised for that. They were also used for an issue with quad bikings again in Clydesdale areas just at the weekend there. Uh, they have been getting utilised there and they will continue to be utilised there. The only reason I'd mentioned the the the, the kind of action plan that they have is just that I knew that there was a, a the community also made me aware that, that these issues magnified in the summer and that that these would certainly be getting used for that, but they will be getting used for other issues within your, your ward areas as well, absolutely. I don't I don't sorry um I don't think what, what I'm sort of saying here is there's only one small area within the ward, and that's Colburn and Douglas that has been asked to finance this project, and they're being used all over the Clydesdale area, South Lanarkshire and North Lanarkshire to an extent. Was there any approach to any other areas such as Lanark, etc., to help fund this project? I'll certainly get back to you on that one, Councillor. I, I'm, I, I'm unaware of that. OK, Catherine. Well, I don't know whether I should mention what I was going to say, but <laughs> anyway, Brian, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I was going to mention the quad bikes, but thankfully they were used in my area at the weekend, which I'm very grateful of. And I hope the other Clydesdale councillors who perhaps funded them don't mind because I think we have to share. And if they're not getting used, I think it's good that they're getting used in Clydesdale or whatever else need to be used. Um, and I don't know whether they were totally funded um, by the community councils, but did REF put money in or anywhere else? Um, it just seems you can't really restrict them to one area, I would hope, to be honest. Can I, can I come back on that? There was an event, and as I said, this was lit up by um, um, George, um, and it was Bacardi's, uh, the uh, VR Energy, Hargreaves that, that funded this along with the community councils. No money came from the REF regarding this. Um, when they were at the presentations, we were told that it would be used for the Coburn and Douglas area. Right, um, Colin, if you put your hand up. Yeah, it was just a, Coburn and Douglas areas and in emergencies, so obviously missing persons, inaccessible areas, etc. We fully understand that. But Mark's point is that our local businesses who are not raking it in at the moment, as no local businesses um, apart from Amazon appear to be raking it in at the moment, contributed £5,000 each. Our community councils contributed £500 each to raise the money entirely from this area for Colburn and Douglas, they would be based in Lark Hall. There was no question of that because that's the local area. But Carluke is not in Ward 4. And if there was an emergency, fully understand that. But as Mark points out, why, if it was going to be used in a much wider area, was funding not raised from the other wards or other businesses approached? Now, we've been approached that we now need, and um, there's additional equipment possibly required for the quad bikes for heated gloves, the tyres aren't exactly the tyres that they require. So there is a there is funding there, but if it was a much wider project, then maybe our local businesses should have paid 2,000 and money should have come from Kerluk and Lanark or Forth or elsewhere from other local businesses. It just seems a slap in the face to the councillors and the businesses that were approached to ask for money that they're not getting the maximum return 
for their investment. Um, but anyway, it, just, it does. Yeah, I think if we knew what we knew now, we probably would not have gone down the route of supporting it because it doesn't seem a fair deal to our local businesses. Had we supported it, it would have been a Clydesdale-wide approach rather than taking advantage of our local businesses because they had the high profile problem, um, but they're not actually going to, it's not going to res help their problem in that the bikes are not going to be there apart from a six week program during the summer, this summer. Um, so anyway, I, I think we should, we should probably move on because it's not fair to you, uh, uh, Brian, because you're new to the post. This is something that's been landed on you. This is the situation and you don't know the background. So it's, it is grossly unfair to lay it at your door. Uh, but I do, there is a lot of annoyance in the fact that it's not what it was painted to be. Eileen Logan. Uh, thank you, Chair. I hope you can hear me all right. Um, well, wait a minute. I don't know. How, how can we uh, move on? I think it would have helped if the said councillor or councillors had themselves opened it up to the other areas. Nobody knew it, it was it's, it's the usual. Um, I'll keep it to myself and I'll steal a march and look at me, I've done this project. So therefore, um, maybe if it had been opened up as Clydesdale wide, put into your committee or whatever it happened to be, then you might have got other people to come on board. You can't come on board on something that is kept very, very much to yourself. Uh, and then opened up. But I don't know where the quad whites would be. I don't know what they're doing, uh, but good luck. And I know they'll be a good asset. But the question I wanted to ask was, when we had bothered with quad bikes before these committee play, I have to say, and it quietened down because I think we were confiscated quite a few, but there were boys going out of their houses at one, and it was boys, and two in the morning in the summertime when it hardly becomes, you know, dark, or running up and down streets, running up and down uh, parks and various different stuff. Uh, then the police did manage to get some information, got them caught, and I think confiscated the bikes. But surely if those boys were under the age of 16, of which I am reliably assured that they were just, you know, between 14, 15, that age group, is there nothing that can done, be done with the parents? Because to me... If it was my child and I knew they were going out, then I'm the responsible person. And it, it was really quite bad for a while. And you, you just, nobody could catch them. Nobody, you just could hear it all over the place. And I have to say the police did a tremendous job. And then we got it fixed. And I think the fact that the bikes were confiscated did much help. Another thing that I saw yesterday, and I would like somebody an opinion, one of the Facebook pages, a uh, Kaluk, something, something pandemic, or I can't remember all the right terminology. But you had said, now people constantly talk about speed on roads, um, and you see it, and when the roads are quiet, there is a lot of speed. But somebody had actually posted, uh, beware, big warning, police are sitting at, uh, at this time it was, I think it was Bogside, doesn't matter, whatever, 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 uh, and then it was getting shared all over the place. Surely that's wrong. Well, maybe it's no. So is that no a criminal offence that somebody took to a social media site to warn everybody that the police were actually out, you know, trying to do their duty? Because the same people <laughs> wearing a different hat were the same people who were complaining about another road and another incident. So they want it two ways, basically. They want to complain about speed and roads and speed bumps and whatever else they want to complain about. And then they go and start to warn people who probably are speeding that the police are sitting, you know, with their, in the, with their speed traps. So uh, two sort of things was, is there nothing that should be done with these parents who obviously knew what their children were doing, but they weren't doing it at their door, and or people who do post on social media, you know, giving warnings about police speed guns and different stuff like that. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, certainly if I can have a conversation with you off table and, and get some additional facts with 
with regards to these youths, I can then find out what was actually done and was there any kind of engagement with the parents, etc., and how that was received. And I'll feed that back into you off table. But I, without I, I, the of who they were, I couldn't really comment sorry. on. on Show you, I, I wasn't looking for, I, I am assuming it has all quietened down or greatly quietened down. I was talking in general that if, if people, I'm not talking about them per se, but if people, it was just as there's no nothing in law that says that if you, if you know your children's, you know, then that, should you know to be responsible for that? There seems to be loopholes that lets people away. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of our kind of problematic areas, our problematic persons, will be discussed at the hub. Our kind of our partners in house and antisocial behaviour as well. And we'll feed all this in with them to look to see if there's other measures that we can take to address these things. But you're you're right. If parents were more responsible, we wouldn't have as much youth offending. Unfortunately, not everybody has the same levels of responsible parenting as as everyone else has. So we do certainly work with our partners in social work and housing and look at, at, ways, at ways to address this and we'll deal with the criminal side of it and we'll work with them to counteract these things as well. Uh, we'll send out letters to them that will also go to the housing, making them aware of your child's committing these offence. Uh, the housing have got this and they, get, they have additional powers that they can that they can kind of utilise as well. But there's a, a weekly meeting with the community sergeants and the housing and our partner agencies that they all attend and they address uh, they'll address issues such as this. Uh, in regard to the social media one, personally speaking, from a, a personal perspective, I find that hugely frustrating. I see it in, in the area where I stay as well. People are always complaining about about persons speeding and as soon as the police deploy an area, within about five minutes, there's a post on social media warning other folk that it's there. Um, I'm not aware of anyone ever being prosecuted for that. I, I don't think we would be able to, but it's hugely frustrating from us as an organisation and me as a person, I find that one massively frustrating. And likewise, you as well too, because a lot of your complaints are con concerning, Speedy. OK, Colin, you come Thank back. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Uh, it's just a comment to Councillor Logan. This wasn't a secret squirrel project. This was a project specifically for the Douglas and Colburn area where we have a specific problem over the Mitchell estate, uh, Mitchell Farms areas, the Wind Farms, uh, Douglas and Angus estates, Dewar's uh, Whiskey Bond, and the, co the rural aspects of Colburn and Douglas. Uh, and it's a problem that we're we've got uh, wildlife crime, we've got um, vans arriving at the weekend, and professional farm uh, quad bikes, not the little go scooters that people buy at Christmas. Careering across private land, there's all sorts of uh, damage being done, fences being removed, gates being removed, um, danger to wildlife, danger to walkers. Um, all, all that is a specific problem that we have had for quite a few years in the Colburn and Douglas area. And that was what the project was for. It's probably an area maybe 25 square miles. So that's why the local people or the local businesses put in their own money and the, the community councils put in their money, which as we know, it has got many things that we need to spend the money on. So it wasn't that we kept it to ourselves. The project was primarily for uh, Douglas and Coburn, not even the whole ward, uh, Douglas and Coburn, and for emergencies elsewhere. So that's why Councillor Horsham and myself and the businesses are a bit peeved by the publicity that's gone out about this and the fact that it says in all the, the publicity, six weeks in the summer of 2021. So it's just, it's not that we don't want the whole of South Lanarkshire to get the benefit of it. It's that that wasn't what we were sold and that's not what we went out to get the funding for. So that's that's just to it wasn't a secret squirrel. OK, can I, um, Alex, you had a, a point first and then Catherine, and then I think we need to to try and move that this on. OK, yeah, chair, slightly differently. Um, partly what Eileen was saying as well regarding what uh, in your report, you haven't given us much idea of what work has been done regarding speeding at all throughout Clydesdale. It is certainly uh, in terms of Police reports. It's the biggest 
concern we have just about every village comes to us uh, complaining about speeding um, don't disrespect it. What resources have you got for combating that? Because there does not seem to be a great deal or any sustained work being done to try and minimise the speeding. Another area in your report that I felt you didn't really give as much on was in the rural aspect. You had a headline, you had a bullet point for it, um, but no real report on what you're doing. I'm aware that other forces have got specialist groups uh, or specialist programs out trying to prevent rural crime such as rustling, farm thefts, etc. Um, but I'm not aware of Q Division or Clyde or anything happening in Clydesdale. Um, is there any, can you give us any report on what you have been doing? Are you going to catch up with other areas and put special programs in place? Yes, I can come in and as I say, I'm relatively new to this role. Uh, however, uh, in regards to speeding, in the kind of month and a bit I've been here, we've literally had one complaint regarding regarding speeding. We do have a traffic department, we'll certainly deploy them. We have our local community officers who have access to handheld uh, speed guns as well, which can be deployed should, it, should this be, be flagged up to them. Uh, prior to this meeting, I spoke to the Clydesdale sergeant who, other than Councillor Corbett's a recent query. We've not haven't had anything about about speeding in the last in the, certainly within the, the last two months. As as what was getting fed back back to myself, sir. A, but yes, we, we do have officers that can deploy and 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 tackle these issues. A, and with regards to the, the, the rural aspect, the there has been a number of, of thefts of quad bikes as as rightly highlighted here. For those ones, we've got a community safety officer based over in Hamilton who will head out and advise on what other kind of safety advice can be kind of put in, put in place. Uh, we have a, what's known as a, one of the proactive teams based at Canvas Lang Office. They've now taken on a number of, of theft of quad bikes and are dealing with that as, as one inquiry. So we've got a dedicated resource to deal with this and combat, combat this. They're linking in with guard costs for intelligence. They're linking in with U Division. It is a, wide, a, a widespread problem across Scotland and Britain. It seems to be organised groups that are coming up to steal these. And it's not just Clydesdale they're targeting. It seems to be right across across Scotland and in many rural locations where they are coming to target specifically quad bikes. Um, the, other, the other thing we do have based up in up at Lanark and, and Hamilton as de a dedicated wildlife officer. So he will also he'll, he'll link in with Gart Kosh in relation to kind of any kind of wildlife offences as well. We, ha we have that. Unfortunately, I'm not really in a position to answer any more just now, but if there is any specifics, I certainly will find out the answer and, and get back to yourself, sir. Supplementary, Chair. Okay. Uh, right. Um, well, it's it's good, it's good to hear uh, what you are doing, but it certainly um, doesn't cover Clambus Lang, isn't certainly the centre of Clydesdale or any rural area um, about where you would be looking for that ex expertise to be. Again, it's not just quad bike thefts or thefts from farmyards that are the problems within the rural areas. Uh, it's much broader than that. And I, well, I haven't spoken to Borders maybe for a year now, but there was a specialist group down there working at trying to uh, trace um, to, to, uh, those who are a uh, rustlers, rustling sheep, etc. Uh, there is a lot more crime in a rural area than what you've mentioned. And secondly, regarding speeding problems, uh, I don't know where all the call the complaints are going because. I have certainly, through the Chief Executive to the Roads Department, uh, highlighted Castells Junction, Symington, Bigger, uh, within my own ward, um, and also out in the Black Mount area uh, earlier last year, in the Elrical area. There is a, I and I, my colleague in the same ward, Ian McCallan, I led to believe, has been reporting a number of speeding issues as well. Uh, so I'm really surprised that you're turning around now and telling us that there is only one that you've been acting on. 
on the back of that, do you think you could give give us all the contact details of who we should be taking these to then, um, to, to to make sure that they aren't lost uh, in the in the future? Yeah, absolutely, sir. We, we, our local community sergeant in Clydesdale is, is Sergeant Cammy Payton. He's based at, at currently based at Kirkluck office. So certainly we have our, our community mailbox. And as I said, all I was feeding in was in the last couple of months there, sir. Uh, we had asked uh, asked for issues with speeding, and the only one that was brought to my attention, certainly since December, was the one I'd mentioned. As I said, I am only recently in post, so apologies, I should maybe have got Sergeant Payton or Sergeant McCauley to sit in on this, who would maybe be a better place to answer uh, this type of question. Catherine, you had a point, you were next. Thanks, Chair. Um, I don't want to labour the point of these quad bikes, but I would imagine that Ward 4 obviously um, should get the precedent over them when they're required if they paid for the capital side of things. But the biggest cost must be um, for the police to man them and the staffing. So hopefully we can share in the Clydesdale area. And if you need us to put in some money, we can look at that. Thanks. Julia, you had a point. Um, yes, it, and you know, I'm feeling that Brian's getting a bit of a hard time at this area committee. and might never come back, actually. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry uh, to to raise this, but I, I'm kind of, I was similarly a wee bit astounded to to hear that you you've only have one speeding issue. Um, I have a number and of Long Street villages in my ward, and I'm sure that my my colleagues here will not be a uh, um. Uh, dissimilarly affected and every one of them has an ongoing speeding issue and what does slightly concern me is I report these to the local inspector or to Cami. in fact I've just had an email there in from Cami about the quad bikes at, at Wilson Town um, that, uh, that I, th I, I do report these things and often the answer is we're intending to have days of action I, I then hear nothing else so I'm a wee bit concerned when these days of action happen or what, what the follow-up is, because we do unfortunately take regular complaint, particularly in Long Street villages, like um, you know, Forth and Brehead and Oak and Grey and Kirkfield Bank. Um and and the problem never seems to go away, but I'm not aware of any actions that are being taken. And I do realise that that, you know, it's a competing priorities and under current circumstances it's even more difficult. Yeah, absolutely, Councillor. Certainly, recently, the police, as with every other organisation in the world, has been affected by COVID as well. But certainly for the days of action, uh, I'll speak to Cammy after this meeting and I'll make sure he feeds us back into you what the results of them were and indeed when the intended ones were. But I'll, I'll certainly speak to Cammy and make sure he feeds back into you, Councillor Mars. Right, the order played Colin, then Eileen and then Poppy. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Chair. Uh, sorry, I don't want to label the point, but I, either. But the speeding issue, we have our surgeries with the local um, senior officers once a month or once every couple of months, and speeding's always raised at them. And the Blackwood, the area around Blackwood Primary School and the Blackwood area and Carlisle Road. Um, I've been a councillor for four years, and that's all. And any time we come across. The, the police that we have surgeries, it's always mentioned Carlisle Road in Blackwood. And I don't understand why the, the it isn't sort of flagged up that, yes, we know we have an issue there and we plan to do something. Um, I don't know if Councillor Horsham would have anything to add to that either, but I'm sure he's raised similar concerns in the areas around Ward 4. Um, on the rural uh, crime aspect, there was an incident last week or within the last 10 days to a fortnight where we had a port transit at, with Irish plates and an insignia, whatever that is, it's a car of some description, um, grey and film of it, and film of them loading the quad bike into the back of the van. Now, was anything, has that been, I know that the van has been cited in open as well, but what I don't understand is when you've got plates, and you've got film, and we've got these cameras all over the roads in Scotland, that something can that with that amount of evidence can't be traced very quickly uh, because we have incredible amounts of rural crime from um well obviously quad bikes 
that people see on the back of transporters going up the road. Um, you get a phone call from, this just happened four o'clock and it's, it's five o'clock in the day and a quad bike's gone from an area. But also crimes against animals, um, uh, sheep being worried by dogs, um, all these type of things. That, is it just that there's, you don't have the resources to patrol or is the connection between phone and 101 and eventually a policeman getting told about it? Why is there such a disconnect between what we are experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis or a week-to-week -week basis and what's actually being reported by senior management at uh, Police Scotland for this area? So I'll certainly an answer to your, your questions regarding the, the, the theft of quad bikes. That is one of the ones that sits with the specialised team at Canvas Lang. They have that inquiry. It is ongoing. Um, without commenting totally on it, and uh, yeah, there is CCTV evidence, but there's, and I know what you're saying about if you have a registration plate, can you not track that down? Yeah, you can, but your issue is, is that the genuine registration plate of that vehicle, is it false plates that, the, that, that this team are using or, or is it not? Uh, it is a live inquiry. I'm not the inquiry officer, but it does sit with the specialist team. They are in touch with a number of other forces across Scotland where these crimes have been happening and it is believed to be the same team that is involved in this. Um, so they're certainly taking on that as inquiry. It sits with the detective officers and they are progressing that one, sir. Um, Sorry, with the, re regards to the, the other ones, no, our officers are, are certainly uh, out on patrol. You will see them when they are out and about. Claysdale is a particularly large area, so, but if there's, and that's why I suppose the benefit of, certainly the benefit of myself coming to this meeting is I, I'm hearing what your problems are and I can then action the community officers and also the response officers accordingly to tackle this. Um, as I said, apologies, I am new in role and in hindsight, I should maybe have brought one of the community sergeants there and that's certainly something I'll take on board at the next meeting. I will be more familiar with this area and hopefully personally I would be able to answer these questions. But the, the geography of the area is, is still something that, I, that, I'm, that I, I'm looking to learn and identify where the problems are. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Just on that, I think you're doing an absolutely brilliant job for just being in at the uh, deep end. And maybe a, a career in politics would be uh, your next step from being in the police because you certainly think on your feet. I think I need a whiskey after this one, sir. Eileen? Oh, thank you. I'm just laughing at the whiskey. If that was the case, we'd be sitting here drunk every day, wouldn't we? Anyway, okay. <laughs> um, it was just uh, something Alex said, and I would like clarified. I know for a fact that I'm dealing with five different cases of reports about speeding and various different things and roads in my area all within, you know, say, the latest would be November, right through local, uh, up till just now. Now, my path is, because most people in their summation to you will put that they want speed bumps or traffic camming or whatever, and that, and that is in every different wee bit of the world that I've had some come through, as would be my colleagues, um, you normally then start off by sending it to the road, South Lanarkshire Roads Division because there's two parts to it. There's the speeding, but also the parts that the road safety teams and different things would look at. Would it be worthy of looking at road safety and CAM, all the different stuff? So, therefore, I would be concerned if I thought, well, that wasn't really getting logged anywhere and that people thought, oh, she's no put it to, you know, an appropriate uh, officer. Um, so if I'm supposed to send it direct to the, the local sergeant, as well as uh, South Lanarkshire Council, if somebody could tell me that so as it's recorded properly, then I would do that. But at the minute, my first recourse is normally to uh, the South Lanarkshire Council usually because there is different aspects to it. But I just want to be somebody to clarify where exactly I should be putting my complaint in case I've been putting it to the wrong place, because I certainly am sitting with about five. Thank you. Right, um, Poppy, you are next. Just a quick one, Brian. First of all, I want to thank you for the help you gave me with the speeding complaint. You got that resolved very quickly, so thanks for that. 
Yeah. Secondly, I think I can hopefully share this with the rest of my fellow ward councillors to pass on our thanks to the police for the, the help and the work and the efforts they put into the Graham Brady investigation. Obviously, we didn't get the outcome that everybody was hoping for, but we'd like to pass on our thanks for, for your efforts there. So thanks very much. Thank you. All right, Colin, you're back again. Um, is it same subject or is that just a, a, a spare hand? Well, Eileen, your hand's up. Presumably that's a legacy hand, is it, as well? Right. I think, for O'Brien, you, your head is reeling, I would imagine. But um, what I think we should do is there are a lot of points came out from different directions. I hope you are making notes because what I would like to see is some responses, if you like, which could perhaps be circulated for the benefit of all of us, because we've all, even if we haven't asked the question, we've all got similar points. And I would like to see either from you or from someone um, in your department, some of the answers, if you like, to show that you've taken this away, that people are looking at it, and then something's going to come back, because I don't want all of this to run into the sand effectively. Um, so, are you happy to do that? Yes, absolutely, Councillor. Uh, I'll have. I yep, certainly. What we'll do is I'll get I'll get Sergeant Payton telling him Councillor Mars and Councillor Logan regarding the speeding issues. Also, also Councillor Allison. Is there any anyone else in particular that that would require a direct response from Cammy Payton about speeding? Uh, okay. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to put my hand up. Catherine, you were first. Yeah, I just think it's better um, for you if he's replying to one councillor in the ward to just copy everybody and it'd be fair. I've probably got the same inquiries as Julia and probably Richard. That's, has yeah, that's what I meant, well. really. So Something I think it's do. better. Normally what the police should be doing is um, just copying it all into the one email and um, that, that covers us. Thanks. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. No. Mark, did you have something Thanks. to say on that? No, it was just um, exactly what Catherine raised, and you know, I think we do experience the same thing as as what Eileen raised. As we usually go to the roads department, mm -hmm. and you know, you, you asking for uh, speed camming measures. Um, so it would be good to know who we actually contact. Do we? Do we have to contact both the council and the police at the same time? And um, so it'd be good to see what sort of process, because uh, as uh, Eileen says, you know, we we all have it in each year war speeding is a big a big thing in the rural area. So it would be good if we could get the response to everybody and 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 going forward how we log the the issues that each councillor is having. Okay, we've got Eileen still hand up. <laughs> Yeah, that's really all I'm interested in, uh, Chair. I, as I say, have put all my complaints via South Lanarkshire Council, who I assume then deals with their own counterparts plus the police counterparts. If that is not correct, that's all I want to know. I'm not got any hang-ups about what the police does or doesn't do, you know, with regard to speed. I think they do a very good job in our local area here. Uh, it's it's the it's the process now. If I had thought, oh well, I shouldn't have maybe have went there, maybe I should have went direct to Sergeant Payton or, or somebody else, then I could have done that. Um, so if my work practice isn't correct, then I only, I only want somebody just to say to me, no, do that or do that. That that's fine. It's no that I've got any Issues. It's it's my issues are now sitting probably, as I say, they were in South Lanarkshire. Now where they went for South Lanarkshire, I don't know. Uh, I'm following that up, but it's in case I'm not doing it right. But normally speaking, people are asking for other issues. So if I could get an answer to that, like Mark Horsham, I'd be happy. Thank you. Okay, Poppy, you were next, and then Julia again. No, is it a legacy hand, Poppy? Right, Julia. Hi, uh, may, maybe I can clarify um, some of of um, of uh, Council Logan's uh, points. That that as chair of road safety, I work closely with with the uh, with the roads teams in terms of what's happening in in for engineering um, across South Lanarkshire for from a road safety point of view. And this is where it gets quite great and difficult sometimes for public to to 
to understand where the council has an obligation in terms of road safety. We do not have any enforcement powers for things that might be leading to a situation of reduced road safety. So it's classically, I will take inquiries of people who believe a, a road is dangerous, they perceive a risk um, of possible accidents. And that's when the council can investigate in terms of engineering solutions, but also with the background that we do not have a budget to look at every single um, a single site or, or route in terms of uh, road um, engineering. And we look at a number every single year through the Road Safety Forum. We deal with them according to the number of, sing of serious injury or, or, um, or sadly fatal accidents. But also the information, if there's a perception of speed and something that police can be enforced, that absolutely has to go to the police. So probably if it's helpful at all, it depends on the nature of each inquiry, but it's the council can absolutely look at engineering solutions, but we cannot enforce speed. Um, uh, so it'd be police working in conjunction with the council quite a lot of the time. I'm quite well aware of that, Chair. And my first, my first answer to people is, South Lanarkshire Council is not a policing authority. Never was and never will be. So policing will go to police. Engineering works or whatever will stay with South Lanarkshire Council. I only wanted clarification if there should be two separate inquiries. So the answer to me now will be if I get a, a query in, one with speeding plus they think they should have this, that, or the other, then I shall hive off and I'll send the speeding part in the first instance to Police Scotland and I'll send my second part to the roads people and say, this was a complaint that came in, I've hived it off and I've done this and I've done that. So that's what I'll do, thank you. Right, well done, okay everybody. Well, Brian, there you go. Um, I think one thing it's come over pretty quickly to you is the wide variety of problems that we do have in the rural areas. And of course, whilst you, you know, we quite understand you're very, thin on the ground and you can't be spread out, that it is important, if you like, that we are as well looked after as we can be, because there is always a slight feeling that the rural bits are pushed slightly to the side and not perhaps as well covered as the urban areas, which is probably a fact of life. So anyway, um, unless anyone's got anything else, Brian, have you got anything you want to wind up with or is that it? No, absolutely, absolutely not. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this meeting. I've certainly uh, taken on board a lot of what you've what you've said, and uh, yeah, uh, as agreed, we'll we'll get back to you regarding your queries. Right. Okay. N anything else? No. Right. You're all done. Well, Brian, well done. Thank you very much indeed. For you. you do stay if you want, but I suspect you might have better things to do. So um, we can let you go. Okay. I'll so get, get a wee whiskey. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Thank Brian. you. Doug. All right. Okay. There we go. Well, we, we it just shows, doesn't it? In a way, and that is not there. We I do feel that, that it's quite difficult for them because they've got so you know they're so under resourced. Frankly, covering the ground is very hard for them. But I think it is important that we had a little a meeting like that. Just just do like a tug on the reins that shows that the rural areas, you know, maybe not getting the attention that they, they, they always should, is my view. Anyway, before we move on, Catherine, you've got something. No, I think a, a fair point would have been that there was no a place to do it while he was here, but I'm absolutely sick, fed up of them changing the staffing round. Yeah. You have a, a different officer every month, just about, and that goes for the top all the way down. And there's no continuity and um, nobody's introducing themselves properly these days. And maybe that's because of COVID, but you can still do um, online, as we all know. So um, I didn't want to bring it up because I think it was kind of hard enough time, to be honest. But I but think that is one of the issues that we should raise. Maybe the next time. That's a part of my complaint, frankly. I think we are, you know, who's who's not doing anything this week? Oh, God, Lanark's missing something. We'll do it. You know, it's that sort of attitude. We should have someone far more permanent. David, you have something. Yeah, thanks, Chair. No, just to come in on what Catherine was saying there, I think 
in years gone by, you would have officers who were knowledgeable of the area that they were representing. I'm thinking of, um, Sergeant Glenn, Eileen for Kerluk, who knew absolutely everything that was happening oh, in I'm that area. And I think we've we've all had that across. Um, Catherine could tell you about officers for Lanark. I'm sure Alec could tell you about officers for Bigger. And they had that local knowledge, which was absolutely essential and made it so much easier because you raised an issue and they went, know about that, know who's involved with that, know where to get a hold of them, don't worry, it'll be dealt with. And it just made life run so much smoother. And then they started this. I think we've had umpteen inspectors in the last three or four years. You've had a different person every every six months or so. And they can get a grip on an area like Clydesdale and that sort of time scale. So maybe we do need to pass it further up the line to say, look, we're going to put somebody in post to actually and let them stay in post long enough to be effective. Can we, um, sorry, Dave, following up exactly that, can we perhaps do something as an area committee to actually make this a little bit more official than just us agreeing amongst ourselves? If it can be passed up, our concerns, and the problem that we have, that we have no one for more than five minutes, where do we take this next? Thanks, Chair, through yourself. I can certainly feed that back to the head of service um, here and see what options there is to deal with it. Right. And I think on the police side, can we take it further up the tree with, with Bailey or anyone further up than that ourselves? I think Councillor Logan wants in. Chair, um, in years gone by, uh, the local officers um, used to know, know sitting in the room. But David will remember, and I don't know about Catherine, but I think it was every two months we had a meeting with whoever was the superintendent or the inspector, and you get a, a full, complete lowdown of uh, what was happening within the Clydesdale area. And sometimes it was before the area committee, and that never really, that was always a bit rushed. But it was a very, very effective way because it wasn't in a formal setting and you could indeed ask, you know, your questions and what you wanted to ask and you get a lot of good information. Now, that might be our way forward where out with the formal setting of the Clydesdale Area Committee, uh, the powers that be might or might not come to a a separate meeting, if that is indeed possible, where we agenda, uh, and then it's it's a more relaxed, it's no such a formal thing, uh, and you can ask or get your information that you are looking for. Um, and I don't know whether that is possible or would be possible now. Thank you. Uh, Julia, you've got a point. Yeah, I, I'm I'm also aware that the council have a, a liaison officer with Police Scotland. I think it's it um Lorna Hinchelwood, I think the newest officer is. Um and I've I know I'm really aware of, of virtual surgery opportunities, but I've all I've never attended these because I don't know that that officer is gonna know anything about Clydesdale and I've usually engaged with my local officers on matters so i don't know that 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 um a liaison officer for the whole of south lanarkshire is that effective i think that having that clydesdale picture is very much um you know much better right blimey everyone's hands going up colin you are next um just to uh, follow on from julia's comment the local surgeries are excellent and it's not just the liaison officer it's the senior officers and the area officers that attend the meeting not necessarily all areas but the last few meetings there's always been the Clydesdale representative or the either the Clydesdale local community officer or Sergeant Macaulay who is in charge of this uh, of, of Lark Hall uh, so they're, they're actually they're very good and it's good to hear 
what challenges there are in the more urban areas of Clydesdale as well as the rural areas. So, so you get a much bigger picture of uh, what the police are encountering. And But my problem has been that it doesn't seem to have been moved forward because we've made these comments um, and Councillor Horsham has made them about Carlisle Road and comments about Douglas and they don't seem to have gone any further than speaking to the top man and it doesn't come back down to the officers or the department that should be dealing with such things as speeding. But it is a good, it, it's a good medium to get your, your problems across and to hear the other challenges. It's well worth attending, Julia. Right. Um, Mark, you had a hand up, then you put it down again. No, it was just a comment to say I, I've always found the virtual surgeries um, um, very good. And, uh, you know, the Clydesdale area is always well represented there by the local um, policing team um, and taking any issues forward. Um, so it was just to back up what Colin was saying there. Right. Catherine. What, um, I did when I was an area chair is we invited the police and fire. In fact, if they wanted to come along the first half hour before area committee, just a general chat, but it would give you an idea of what was happening in the area. And if anybody had their own specific thing that they wanted to chat to them, well, they took them outside the room, but you kind of that virtually. But it was quite um, well received, I would have said, at the area committee's end, but it might be an idea to start it again if they've got the time. These, sorry, um, just uh, as far as I'm aware, these these police or fire or whatever, it is, they were always organised centrally so that they went round all four areas. You know, they, they went round four areas and then the next lot went round four areas. So it was a programme organised, if you like, from um, the central office. I don't know, Carol, whether that's still the same case, i.e. is this policeman now going to appear in the, the other three areas with the same talk or what? Thank you, Chair. Um, no, it won't be the same inspector that appears at the other area committees as an inspector um, who works within those areas that, that go to the other committees. But it is a um, programme of visits by the police. It, it is a programme of visits. Um, I think that East Kilbride and Cambus Lang have already had their presentations. Clydesdale is today and Hamilton tomorrow. Um, in terms of the police and fire being invited for a catch up with committee, I don't know, before or after or even at another date, um, I know that it did happen in the past um, and I can certainly ask the question if it's something that members um, would like to see again. I think it's a good idea. David. Yeah, uh, thanks, Richard. I would agree with that. I think we we must find a better way to get the, the, the communication better so that if we've got issues, we know the right people to speak to and we get a response back. Because there's nothing worse from a constituent's point of view where they bring, say, speeding to your attention and you pass it over and the polis are notorious for not getting back to you. They just say, oh, we're dealing with it. And you go, that's great, that would be handy to know that, and I could let the constituent know. So there is a communication issue. But Catherine's right, they used to turn up at the area committee half an hour before, they'd have a quick blether to us, and we could raise any issues with them, and they could raise issues with us on a semi-unofficial basis. And Eileen's right, there are times when you need that, pst, can have a quiet word in your ear rather than, I'll put it through official channels. And it was a good two-way communication. And that seemed to work fairly well, but it's drifted away. And we're now in a situation where that's the first time I've seen the new inspector that's in charge. I mean, I could have walked by him in the street and I wouldn't have known him. Now, maybe, maybe that's my fault for not, you know, taking more of an interest or having to deal with, you know, police matters. But it's also a failing on his part to say that this is the first area committee that he's came along to. So I think we need to do, we, we do need to look at the communication and how we fix that. Thanks. Okay, well, Carol, what we'll, if, if before we do the, the minutes, let's put something together to, and, and see if we can push that along. Okay. Thanks, Chair. Right. Have we exercised that enough? Good. OK, well, the last bit is pretty simple in the sense that it's the community grants. And of course, 
almost all of them um, have not been applying this year. Um, did everyone get the note I sent out a bit earlier today? Just just a summary of where we were with these grant applications. Or have that have people not got that note? It was a bit late on, I'm afraid. I just suddenly thought it would preempt the questions which you're probably going to ask anyway about what we do with the rest of the money. Yes, got it. OK, well, let's just go through community grants. Pages is pages five to eight. Um, there's very little. Um, the only one effectively that is um, outstanding, which we have to agree on, unless anyone has got to absent themselves from this particular decision, is the Lanarkin District Archaeological Society. That's the only community grant applied for in this quarter. Does anybody have any problems with that one? Catherine? I don't have a problem. I just wondered why we're only giving them 200. Is that all the, the yeah. they could get? Yeah, What's we looked at that. And I think we, we, just, we agreed that 200 was what they got. Yeah, I think um, generally, Councillor, we, they, they've asked for 390. Um, generally, when awarding grants, we would kind of go to the halfway mark, which has been sort of standard practice across the years. Um, obviously, that is only a guideline and it is down to members ourselves to decide how much they want to award. Personally, I think if we've got all this money left, 390 wasn't a lot to ask for. Um, and I think we've been a bit miserable if, the, if what they asked for qualified, I would suggest that we give them it. Well, hang on, we're breaking our own rules in that case because oh, you we, have no go rules like that, Richard. They rules well, under it anyway. The last meeting spent quite a lot of time discussing uh, exactly how you should be equally fair across the board for all of these things. And although it's it's a tiny amount, I mean, I'm mentally I totally agree, but are we not actually just crossing the lines which we drew in our own sand? No, well, what people just start doing is they'll, they'll go for a thousand and expect five hundred. So these people weren't greedy; they only asked for three hundred and ninety, which was all that it required. Obviously, personally, I think it would have been a bit miserable. Well, I'm entirely open to suggestion, but I think we're, we're, we're not following what we actually said we would do the last time. So if you if you're all in favour of giving them 390, I suppose we can vote to do that. If you're in favour of giving them 390, put well, your hand that... now. Sorry. Put your hand up so we can all see now. No, no, um, no. I want to say something. The oh, problem, I mean, sorry. Sorry. The problem is, um, and I'm sorry, I'm just leaving my, my colleague. The problem is, in my view, that. It's all right to say that they, they just asked for that, which is good for them. Uh, but we did have a big discussion stroke, no row, but discussion the last time, because if, if people are then asking for, you know, a, a, say a thousand, whatever, whatever, and, and it was always, well, you could get that, then I, I don't, I'm not agreeing that we should touch it. That's my view. So that's my vote. Right. OK. Do I need to put this to a vote or do I not? What I'd like to do. Oh, Julia, you've got a point. I sought clarification from officers for what exactly the equipment was. Um, so I can't speak for whether the 390 requested is you know, is a whole cost or um, or you know if, how that relates, but is it helpful for the committee to, to know what the piece of equipment is that the, the group are after? Carol, is, is Lynn got that or have you got that? Sorry, Chair, I'll have that here. I'm just having a look through the um, application forum just now. OK, so they're they're looking for um, an A3 scanner. Um, at a cost of £390, which includes inks. Um, they want to use it to promote activities during the current crisis and store in a permanent record of our heritage on the World Wide Web. Right, well, the precedent is 
pretty much the same as, as, as a pipe band or anyone else who comes applying for equipment and what we grant them. And as far as I remember, they tended to be granted about half what they asked for as a sort of rule of thumb. But Catherine is right. I don't think there's a real rule, but it's a rule of thumb. Colin, you've got a point. Uh, my, my only point is that as opposed to a brass band or a silver band who are doing it for their entertainment and their pastime, this is the archaeological society, which is everybody's heritage being protected, captured before it's lost forever. And for the sake of £390, I think it is something that does benefit the whole of Lanarkshire and the wider diaspora as well, for the sake of £390. Uh, but that's just my... I know it's maybe going again, but it's not a sports club. Um, so we do have leeway and we do have money. And we've got Julia again. Uh, sorry, my apologies. I didn't realise my hand was... Right, Catherine. No, if people are only comfortable with giving 100%, Considering we've got 12,090 remaining balance, we could give them 290, which would be a wee bit more, not the full thing. But I do think they're a worthwhile cause. And Colin's right, they covered the whole of Clydesdale, to be honest, and this is a really worthwhile thing in my mind. Right, Mark. I actually, I, I, agree, I agree with Catherine, but we did have this discussion at the last meeting. Um, and we were told that to to all right they're not written rules but to go away from them then would be unfair to, to other to other um organizations that have asked for funding previously and going forward thanks right well okay i mean personally i i i'm, I'm coming down on the side that we should not give them the 390 simply because we've agreed the rules. I'm not worried about the quantum of it. I totally agree that in relation to the quantum, it's a feeble, feeble argument. But my view is that if we make that rule and we have to stick with it, and therefore um, I would, I don't know whether this needs to go to a vote, but I would like to propose that the award goes forward as stated. If there's enough dissent, then Carol will need to take a vote. Can I tell you what, can I, without wanting people who don't want to talk, Catherine, can you put your hand down for a second? What I would like to do is to take an instant vote by getting everybody right now who would like to vote to give them the full amount or a slightly lesser amount to raise the hand icon on their machine right now. No, Mr. Chair, the way you need to do it is to ask if yes. there is any counter motion to be made. You've made the motion right. that it be agreed. If we disagree, it is up to someone then to propose an alternative yeah. motion yeah. and we then take the vote. That's the way I it's agree, done. Alison. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I was just trying yeah. to shorten the process. OK. Yeah. Has anybody want to put forward a counter motion? Catherine, you want to put forward a counter motion, right? Is there a seconder for this motion? Yes, Chair. You've got to listen to what I'm what you ask for, though. <laughs> You've done this all wrong. You stopped me from speaking that I was going to put that motion. I even got to put a motion for 290, thanks. OK, apologies for failing to follow the system. Right. There is a motion, as far as I can see, from Catherine McClymont to say that are you proposing the full amount or a lesser amount, as you mentioned before? Chair, you need to clean your ears. 290, thanks. Right. OK, is there a seconder? Right. I'll second it. Colin McGavigan, in which case we have to go to a vote. Carol, okay. would you like to do the honours, please? Thank you, Chair. OK, so um, by way of the motion, we have the proposals which are contained within the report which is that um, Lanarkin District Archaeological Society be awarded £200. Um, do we have a seconder for that? I second that, Carol. Thank you, Councillor Horsham. OK, so by way of amendment, we have Councillor McClymont, seconded by Councillor McGavigan, proposing that the organisation be awarded £290. 
If first of all I can have a show of hands please for the amendment, so that is the award of 290. Sorry, actually I can't do that this way. Um, we need to do this by roll call. Apologies. So um, if you, um, you indicate why, whether you either want to vote for the motion or the amendment. OK, so Ali Callison. Amendment. Poppy Corbett. Motion. Mark Corsham. Motion. Richard Lockhart. Motion. Eileen Logan. Motion. Catherine McClymont. Amendment. Colin McGavigan. Amendment. Julia Mars. Motion. David Shearer. Motion. Okay, thank you, Chair. So we have six for the motion and three for the amendment. Great, thank you very much. OK, so the motion is carried. Right. Um, the next part of this is... Apologies, uh, someone shared their screen. Someone shared their screen. I don't know who that is. Alec Allison, I think. That's us, thank you. Right, OK. Now, the rest of that um, section is um, already awarded and it is purely for noting unless anyone has any particular points they want to make about it that was using up the five thousand pounds as was described in the letter uh, which was set aside for specifically for covid related um help as it were um has anyone got any points on any of those grants just that they all got 100 percent yeah, that were, they were designed to do that. They were all approved by Paul. Has anyone got any points about them? Agreed. Right. We're agreed with all of them. Good. Thank you. Uh, so that's it then for the for the <coughs> for the grants. We well, any other items of urgent business? Has anybody got any? None. Right, in which case, all I have to do then is thank you all for your attendance. And it was quite useful, I thought, about the police. I think it was very helpful. And um, if there's nothing else, I would now like to declare the meeting closed and ask the clerk to stop the recording. Thanks, Chair. All done. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.